Aloha, broha. It's your boy, Lad Lamp, my question mark emoji, the ultimate life form. So make sure to like, subscribe, and donate to my Patreon because you can't comment anymore. So today, we're going to be expanding on a video that I made a while ago that I kind of rushed. And we're going to be talking about the different types of deck constructions you can make. Uh, for the record, these will all be using the WBO's deck format, which I made a video explaining a long time ago, but be warned that the production on that is kind of bad, so if you want to suffer through that, you can. But if not, I'll just get on with the, the four types of decks. So the first order of deck that I'm going to be talking about is not really a deck in the sense of a uh, any kind of competitive or strategic combo selection. It's more of just a deck in the literal sense that it is three combos with no repeating parts that is used in a deck format match. Um, this is generally used, this is the kind of deck you might see from someone who it's their first tournament or the first time making it to the finals. Um, they've gotten through the first stage but just by spamming one competitive-ish or top tier combo kind of like this uh, Lord Spriggan Blitz uh, Octa. It can outspin most right spin things, and it will have a decent chance against other left spin opponents as well. But they basically relied on this combo to the finals, and it's obviously going to be in their deck. But the other parts they have, which are probably pretty limited, don't really like stack up to the competitive level of this one. And these combos are mostly just going to be scrap combos put together with what they, what parts they might already have. Um. This deck is not very difficult to counter. The easiest thing to do is just uh, have a safe counter to the main combo that they're going to be using, which would be something like this. And chances are that uh, even if they, they're not going to have another combo that can take down the counter to their main combo out of the two other scrap combos they have in their deck. So it's a pretty relatively easy deck to counter if you run into it. So the second order of deck is probably the most common one you'll see in tournaments and it's just I call it basic coverage or just a standard deck. None of these have official names I'm just kind of making them up but what it is is basically three competitive first stage combos which are combos you would just use in the first stage that don't share any parts obviously and between the three of them, they all have pretty good coverage, which they would need to if they would be used in the first stage. So something like Judgment Diabolo Splits Octa, Archer Hercules, Seven Cross Extend Plus, and Tact Bahamut Sting Atomic 10. These are all pretty good competitive combos, and these decks like these are actually pretty formidable just because they provide such a wide amount of coverage that it's difficult to counter them with without so at least some back and forth between other competitive combos. But these kind of decks are generally know, used by players who they know good combos and they know how to build them and they generally have an idea of what to use against what but they might not necessarily know different matchups and how the combos interact. So it's generally kind of difficult to thread the needle and find some sort of common weakness that all three of these combos have, but it's definitely possible. So for example, for this one, um, something like Lord Dragon Zero Expand Atomic would be a possible counter to this entire deck, just because um, Expand will beat Sting in opposite spin, this will just stabilize, extend plus, and it will possibly be able to stall out Okta and also to stabilize it as well. So, like I said, it's definitely possible to find just a common weakness that all three of these meta combos share and exploit that. And sometimes there just isn't one, it just has coverage that, it has coverage against pretty much anything. But this is still a solid type of deck, it just doesn't really have any kind of deeper strategy or um use of matchup knowledge to it. So for the third order of deck, I'm going to be using uh, MFBs as an example just because 
Uh, it's the kind of deck construction that you see more often with MFB than you do in Burst. And I've called this the uh, anchor or support deck. And it's kind of what I mentioned in the previous video where it talked about this kind of stuff. But basically, the deck is anchored around one safe combo that would be used in the first stage. And you, this is kind of like your default combo that you will go with just to begin with because it has a decent chance against a lot of different combos and if it does run into any of its weaknesses it has these other niche combos to support it to counter those weaknesses so for example this uh, Earth SR200 TB has a decent chance against like most defense and stamina combos including like Flame 230 and pretty much anything shorter than it but it's weak to uh, left spin and attack so in order to deal with left spin, I have Esculpio on EWD, which is pretty much a hard counter to all left spin stamina combos. And Jade 100 RS, which is a hard counter to pretty much all attack combos. So with these two covering its weaknesses, um, it makes it a lot safer to use this combo. And it's a pretty solid type of deck construction. but. It does have a weakness in that if the opponent is also running a similar kind of deck and their safe combo happens to counter your safe combo, then there wouldn't really be much you can do about it just because the other matchups that they have aren't really going to work in your favor if they can dominate the safe combo matchup. And another good example of a anchor or support deck is kind of the one that uh, K uses at uh, AN 2018 for Limited, where he pretty much relies on the Scythe combo as his anchor and then has Jade 100 RS to counter the attack types and Flame 230 CS to counter any other stamina or other types that could have resisted the Scythe combo. And the last order of deck is something I like to call a control deck and it it's intention it's a really weird setup and you need some very very specific combos to make it work but when it does it can be effective because the point of this deck is to provide incomplete coverage against opponents to get them to exploit your weakness and to force them to play an unfavorable matchup and I, I'll explain this setup a bit. So basically, this deck here is Tact Diabolos, Double O Wall Hold, uh, Zwei Fafnir, Ten Glaive Jolt Dash Metsu, and Lord Dragon Zero Keep Dash. So this might seem really weird, but basically, the way I have this working is that this has can pretty much it has a decent chance against pretty much any right spin opponent including stuff like Right Spin Bearing and Right Spin Extend Plus. And even if it doesn't, this still has a chance to destabilize them with Keep Dash. That goes for things like uh, Right Spin Lord and Right Spin uh, Perfect Phoenix and stuff like that. These also serve as pretty good defensive combos against the opposite spin direction attackers, but Something that this one is kind of weak to is pretty much all left spin, stamina, spin equalizers, just because keep dash does not have very good life after death. So what that means, and hold, hold same spin stamina is also pretty bad. So basically by providing this weakness in these two safer combos here, I'm kind of forcing the opponent to play a left spin stamina combo on something like atomic or bearing or extend plus and that's where this comes in because it's a left spin attacker it will stand more of a chance against those and be able to KO them or burst them more consistently than they would against any other kind of combo in the game and you do have to sacrifice some points in order to win them back with attack so it is something you would see more in burst or burst classic where points are worth, er, KOs and bursts may be worth two points, as opposed to MFB where everything's only one point. And if this was kind of confusing, there's actually a few videos, both of them are matches between me and Ardmore Bladers, where um, I used a kind of deck similar to this, 
where I forced him to play an unfavorable matchup and was able to score more points than I lost using an attack type. So that's going to be about it for the video. Um, hopefully this was a little more, I guess, explanatory of how to build certain decks, how they work, how to counter them, stuff like that, than the previous video was, which I kind of just made for the sake of needing a video. But hopefully this goes into a little bit more depth onto how to construct an, uh, a higher level, I guess, competitive deck than just putting three combos together by explaining how some of these strategies you can use work and other um, emergent play type of things. But yeah, uh, make sure to like and subscribe because you can't comment anymore and I will see you guys next time, maybe.